everybody welcome back as you can tell I have like a new little setup here I'm trying something new tonight and hopefully I'm gonna make this into like kind of a series I tried to do something like this before but I got off kilter so I'm trying again this is going to be I know y'all seen what is it the paint and pours well we're gonna try and do a little drink and paint that's what I'm gonna call it drink and paint where I present to you a certain bottle of alcohol which in this case is Richard Childress's, um, well, it's from Richard Childress's Vineyards, but it's their Sweet Blush Wine, their Mustard Eye Wine, for this video anyways, because <laughs> I wanted to try that, and I've never had their stuff, and they live, like, right up the road, well, a couple hours up the road, but still, I wanted to try it, but um, anyways, I'm going to present to you some kind of um, alcohol, and I'm going to express my feelings about it. And while we sip on that and I tell you a little bit about the beverage we're drinking, we're going to be painting some kind of something back here. We're going to be painting. <laughs> so there's not really a plan to this. We're just going to we're gonna drink and have fun about that. So let's get into it. I have not opened this yet. And like I said, this is my first time trying this wine. So it is from Richard Childers Vineyards, which if you're not familiar with like the South and NASCAR, Richard Childers is one of the big one of the big main sponsors or um, owners in NASCAR. He used to own, and I have, I have fuzz attached to my lips, so sorry about that. But um, he used to own um, Dale Earnhardt Sr.'s number. Um, Junior used to be a part of him, and then he has a few others that I haven't got caught up to date on some of his people, but you get what I mean. He's a NASCAR owner. But um, for this wine, it is obviously produced in Lexington, North Carolina. Um, and as far as I know, it's just made out of muscadines, which I love muscadines. I don't know anybody in the South that doesn't. And if you do, I feel bad for your taste buds because they're really good. <laughs> um, anyways, okay, so this one is like their Sweet Southern Sippin' one. And it's their red one. Now they have another one that's a white. This is like their... This not, well, it's red, but they have one that's darker than this. So, and then they have another set of wine that's dedicated to Earnhardt Senior and that whole that whole thing. But I wanted to try this one because I'm kind of picky about my wine, so I like a sweet wine. So let's pour. Got to do the proper pour here. And yes, this isn't the wine glass for this type of wine, but know what you would drink a muscadine wine out of because I know red wine and white wine has a certain glass but I'm not so sure about muscadine. Okay so obviously you have to swirl it. Well you have to hold it down here first if we're about to be a real wine connoisseur and you have to swirl it and you have to smell it and it does smell sweet although I smell a little bit of like the tanginess kind of so now we have to try it. I'm not going to spit it back out because that's just a waste of wine. I'm going to drink it. <laughs> it's like, oh, I'm drinking this. Because if you've ever been to a wine tasting, they recommend that you, you know, you don't really drink it because you're not supposed to get drunk. You're supposed to be trying the wine, not drinking it. Yeah, I'm just going to drink this. Not as sweet as I was thinking it was going to be, but not as bitter either. It's kind of like if you've ever had a muscadine right before it gets really, right before it goes bad, but when it's still kind of sweet, that's what this tastes like. And if you haven't, then it's, I wouldn't say it's as bitter as a red wine, depending on what kind of red wine you have. It's not dry at all, by the way. This is not a dry wine. Um, it's actually fairly, this would be good for, I could see maybe like eating red meat with this wine. I don't know why I just get the red meat kind of thing because you know when you drink certain wines you can kind of pick up on the notes and stuff in it that you would want to pair with certain foods like this I could see maybe a really good filet mignon or a steak or, or you know like a sirloin steak or um something like that something along those lines maybe even a really good roast like a really tender roast I could see with that but like I said when you smell it it smells sweeter and then when you try it It's not as sweet as a fully ripe muscadine, which is probably their white one is probably a little bit more 
sweeter than this one but I will say it is sweet compared to some of the other wines that I've had in this kind of in this kind of zone now the only notes that I really pick up is you can really taste the muscadine in it um like I said it has a little bitter note in it but it's very well balanced I'll give it that this is a good as I said on the bottle it's a good sipping wine so let's sip this I'm gonna set this down and we're going to refocus the camera more toward the canvas and we're gonna paint something I don't know what but we're gonna paint something so give me just a second okay now that I've repositioned my camera and put on some more light for y'all I'm just gonna turn the palette a little bit more toward y'all okay now all I'm using is some basic acrylic paint um, I'm not using a brush I'm actually gonna be using my little I don't know what you really call these my little spatula tools <laughs> I know they have a technical name and I actually have metal ones I just don't know where they are right now, so we're using the plastic ones. But I'm going to do some kind of abstract painting on here, and I'm just going to pick from my little colors and just kind of dab it on here, and really see what I come up with. Uh, let's see, let's take, and these are brand new, I haven't even opened these yet, so I'm just going to do that. I'm just going to dab some on. first color I picked was a dark blue and the second color that I have is just a portrait pink is what I'm using. Okay, so I'm just going to just pull my colors in a certain direction. get the blue spread out a little bit right now. I'm going to add in another shade of blue. It's called the Ultramarine. So we're going to add that in. Like I said, it's just a different little shade of blue. Right now I'm working with a lot of blue. Now I'm gonna think I'm gonna go in with some light green. So I'm using some light green. And my main thing is I'm trying to keep all of my motions kind of in the same general
be here. I think I'm gonna, I need a paper towel to clean my little palette because it's not getting as clean as I would like it, just scraping it off on the sides. So give me one second. Okay, I gotta get something to clean my little Whenever I figure out the name of this, I'll put it like somewhere around in there. Let y'all know what exactly I'm using. Okay, so I think I'm gonna go back in with a lighter yellow, honestly. I kinda want a little no, I'm gonna go in with orange. I want orange. It might help if you break the seal. I keep forgetting this is a brand new paint. So we're just gonna go in with some orange. And all I'm doing is taking the flat end of my little scraper and I'm just putting pressure on it as flat as I can and pulling up to make each of these little marks. But I'm trying not to really blend it. pink in it. Looks like we need some pink and I might add a bit more blue because it looks like my red is kind of taking over my blue. I don't have a really light pink. I have, I have a magenta. Let's see how the magenta goes. Because when I went back in with the, I have, I do have the portrait pink but I think that's a little bit too light. And I don't have anything here to really mix it with, so I'm just going to break my seal. Let's go back in with a few spots of that. Let's see if we can't break up some of this really heavy color. Something in here. I think I might add a really light a lemon yellow down at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Adjust my canvas a little bit. So I can really get at the bottom. spots I did miss too.
I'm not really sure what it ended up being, but here is our overall result from our drinking paint. <laughs> okay. So let me readjust our camera there. There we go. So. I hope y'all took some time to relax after your long day of work today. And, you know, you didn't necessarily have to do the conglomeration that I did, which I'm not even really sure how I did it. And most of you people out there might think this is horrible. I kind of like it. I don't know. It gives me like a, I don't know, like a forest kind of, I don't know. It, it gives me like a nature vibe, like a nature at sunset kind of vibe. That's what it gives me. But here is the portrait up close. So you can see it in all of its detail. Now this will have to sit up and dry and this is going to be the way that I'll probably display it. I might even end up putting a, uh, a like a resin glaze over this and painting the sides and put it on the website for sale. But yes, I hope y'all enjoyed our little paint and drink. Hopefully this is going to be the first in the series. Now tonight I didn't really have a plan on what I actually wanted to paint. Some of the other nights I might actually have a plan on us to actually paint something. But you know, I think this is just kind of a cool way to get out all your frustrations from a Monday and, you know, experiment with a new kind of beverage if you are into that. So, anyways, I hope y'all enjoyed this. Um, like I said, this is going to be like the first, hopefully, in the series. So, just be looking out for that. You know, I'm not going to do it like every week, just whenever I'm in the mood to actually do it, then I'll do it. Because I kind of wanted to do a painting like this for a while. Just... And know it like again like like I said I know it probably looks like a mess to y'all but I kind of like it I get a weird I don't know I get some kind of weird nature vibe out of this so that's what I'm going with that's what I'm sticking with I like it that's all that matters <laughs> but anywho now just remember that the beverage for this for this episode there we go for the very first episode is the Richard Childers um, Vineyard sweet blush wine the muscadam wine so you could probably if you don't live around here then it might be kind of hard for you to get it i picked that up at my local total wine i think it was fit 14 or 15 dollars a bottle if i'm not mistaken that's what that one was so it's not too badly priced for a kind of a good sweet mild wine that i think it would go with like a lot of different pairings and you can really whew, i need to get some more sleep but Anyhow, <laughs> I hope y'all enjoyed this little detour for my normal crafts, and I will see y'all next time. Thank you so much for joining me, and I really hope you enjoyed this. Bye, guys!